Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a very casual. As you can see, I literally just got out of the shower and it's going to be another episode of sit down, chit chat, get ready with me using shop my stash items. And I have a bunch of things uh, to catch up with you on and uh, we'll answer some questions at the end of this video. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. Hi, my name is Eve. I love all things beauty. I talk all things beauty here on my channel, makeup, skincare, hair care, and at times a lifestyle things like travel and fashion. If that sounds interesting to you, I hope you stick around, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this uh, casual video, and I hope to see you in my future videos. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. I don't know if I'm going to be talking a lot about the products as I apply them to my face because I want to chat on different topics with you guys. However, everything that I'm using will be linked for you in the description box. I just applied my skincare on my face. That's why you see like I'm so glowy. And uh, I think I'm going to start with uh, this primer. It's a Derma Blend um, Instant Jelly Grip Primer. So I'm going to use it quite a bit of it. So I think that's like three pumps. And I kind of work very fast with this because it does have kind of like a watery gel consistency at first, but the longer it sits on your face, it starts gripping and settling. So you don't want to wait too long. This is an excellent formula. I actually really like it. It um, does prolong my makeup wear and just make my foundation sit really nice on it. So whenever I use a grip and primer, I try to kind of apply it in all the crevices, like where my smile lines would be, like around my mouth, because I know that it's going to help the complexion product grip to it. Also, whenever I use something that's gripping, I also put it all over my brows because I know it's going to give me extra hold. Just a little tip for you. I know you guys see me in a very casual setting like this, but I don't think I've ever wore my actual turban, uh, my hair towel on my head. I actually wasn't really planning to film this video today. This video was definitely on my filming list because I do a monthly, so I didn't have time to film it during the week. And I said, like, if I don't film it like today, right now, regardless of this look, then I will not film it. There's a chance that I'm not going to film it and then there's not going to be enough time till the end of April for me to even edit it. I'm also going to use my Clinique foundation. So it is an old fashioned packaging like this. So just on twist. So I definitely wish they would put like a pump or something. So month of April actually had a lot of going on all of a sudden, like tomorrow morning early, we're heading out to South Florida to our friend's baby shower. And because they're about like four or five hours away from us, it's gonna take us the entire weekend. So they basically invited us to stay with them for the entire weekend for that event. And these are like the very close friends of ours. So I wear makeup every day. So I thought, uh, since I'm gonna be doing my makeup regardless for today, I might as well just film this video as casual as it can be. And then in two weeks, we're actually going to be going up north to spend some time with my boyfriend's family. I know they wanted to go to New York, so I don't know if I'm gonna be vlogging for that. I may. The foundation is excellent, but it's just not my spot on undertone. I'm gonna use this Born This Way to face concealer just a tiny bit like here. Like I'm just gonna put like the tiniest dots because this is a full coverage concealer. So we just passed Easter and I actually vlogged. I intended to vlog for Easter and do like this really fun vlog. And I really don't know if I will be able to pull the entire vlog and finish it and edit since we're going away for the weekend. If you are new here, so you might not know this, but I am Russian and I am Christian Orthodox. And our Easter is usually a week, usually it is a week after um, Catholic Easter. So Easter and here in America was on the 9th and Orthodox Easter falls on the 16th. I like to celebrate Easter on Orthodox Easter. A few years ago, I actually happened to go to see my family and spend it uh, with my family. Easter is one of my favorite holidays. In America, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving and then Christmas. But in Russia, my favorite holiday is Easter. If I would have to claim one holiday, uh, like to host in my own home, this would be Easter. But that would definitely be my holiday. I love this holiday so much. So I initially planned to do it on the 16th of April this time, but then we realized that we were going away for the entire weekend for a baby shower, which is on Saturday. And I realized that we're not gonna be at home to celebrate Easter. So I actually changed my plans. I did everything on the 9th. So I set up like a really nice brunch for us. So I really wanted to share like my home decor with you and like few dishes that I cooked and like my flower arrangements stuff like that. At this point, I really don't know if it's going to see a daylight because 
I don't know if I'm gonna have time to uh, edit it. So if you did celebrate Easter with your family, with your loved ones, I hope you had a good one. I'm gonna bronze my face first. I'm gonna use the LYS uh, cream bronzer. As I promised in one of my recent videos that I'm gonna share this scary story with you that included my dog. <laughs> Of course, any story, you guys, that's scary in our household includes my dog. It was about a few weeks ago, me and my boyfriend woke up in the morning, made our basic breakfast, eggs, bacon, coffee, and we were heading out out of the house to work. If you've been to my channel before, so you already may know that we do have a 90 pound Weimaraner. He is the sweetest dog. We love him so much. He's just like a babiest baby ever. However, he also has a lot of a separation anxiety and when he's left by himself at home he always gets into like all sorts of trouble i have another dog too um he's a mix he's a 35 pound uh, mix so whenever we leave them by themselves i want to make sure that we clean off all our counters in the kitchen there's absolutely nothing on the counters so all the doors are baby proofed so we have basically like ties on every single door. Some doors we actually had to install locks. You know, we got that device on the toilet. So we, we have like the house baby proofed. So long story short, we left for work. It was early in the morning. And then when I came back from work, it was probably about like four o'clock in the afternoon that day. So I went to the kitchen to make myself food. And then all of a sudden I see that the stove is on one of them. One of the burners is on. So I froze there for a second and started looking around if did somebody come in in the house? Like I was confused for a second. I was like, how did this even happen? So I had my phone in my hands. So I took a picture of the stove and sent it to my boyfriend like immediately. And I said, did you by any chance forget to turn off the stove? And he said, no, I also didn't come to the house like since we left in the morning. And I was like, this is so weird because like, why is the stove on? So here I am standing there and thinking, how did the stove turn on by itself? When I look around, it turns out that we made bacon in the morning and I used this like small oven trays and the bacon was left on the flipping stove. And I see that the tray was pushed back to the wall with the bacon. And then all of a sudden it hits me that our dog was trying to get two bacon. As simple as that. So then something else came to my mind. So I'm gonna use my Cheek Leader palette for Hula bronzer. And then it hit me again because I started thinking about it. I was like, how in the world the fire is on? So apparently, apparently, because there's no other way, it's just kind of like my track of thought. So the bacon was there on the stove and the dog was trying to get to it. So he probably got up on the stove and somehow pressed on the knob and turned it so the stove turned on and it literally blows my mind because the knob needs to be pushed down from that little switch that working and then you actually need to turn it while holding it down so just on its own that blows my mind the dog was able to do it i mean of course it's kind of like accidentally he probably like jumped on the stove like pushed on it a few times i'm just trying to wrap my mind around it what are the chances that the dog actually managed to do it okay because you need to hold the knob down and then holding it down you need to turn Turn it for the fire to come up and then the way our stove is set up is that whenever you turn the light on the fire is on the max and then you have to turn it further out to make it smaller so then i realized that the fire was on the medium height okay so so he somehow turned it halfway so the fire was like medium. Another part to this was that whenever I bake the bacon in that aluminum tray, I also have this um, parchment paper that I line the tray with. Sometimes it's not really a perfect size, so I just kind of like rip it off of the roll and just put it there. And then I'm looking at the tray and I'm looking at the fire standing right next to each other. And I'm realizing that this paper, uh, so this paper, this parchment paper is sticking out of the tray like a good amount, right? Like different angles. So I'm looking at the tray, I'm looking at this parchment paper and I'm looking at the fire and I'm realizing that if the fire was a little bit bigger, just I'm, like I'm getting goosebumps on my body right now. I realized if the fire was just bigger, it would catch on the parchment paper because it would be a little bit wider and the parchment paper was just literally this far away from it. Oh my God, you guys, I can't deal. 
this would catch on fire, you guys. This would catch on fire like thousand percent, okay? And as I'm speaking, I'm like, I'm literally like getting shivers on my body. This entire thing just kind of hit me all at once. This like idea, the image of everything catching on fire and like the fire could possibly catch everything around. Uh, so we had parchment paper, the tray full of bacon that's also this much grease in it. Imagine fire heating that grease. It just, oh my God. So I just pictured all that in my head for a second. Uh, so, and I texted my boyfriend and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. It was like one lucky chance that was given to us. So this is a story. We definitely got really, really scared from this and definitely learned from the mistake for sure. What do you guys think of Alta doing the 22nd days of beauty? That was interesting. So that was definitely the first time that I've ever seen it. I've been shopping the event for a very long time. I'm using the Kosa's Duo for my brows. There were a lot of items that were included. However, it wasn't like the entire, entire variety uh, from the entire event. So I think maybe something that didn't sell well that they wanted to maybe extend. Uh, that was kind of a, a fun surprise. I wanted to see if you guys noticed that at all. If you ended up actually shopping that day, share your thoughts with me in the comments below. Now that I'm kind of done with my complexion, I'm gonna pick my blush and everything else and lips at the end of the video, but I wanna do the eye look first. And I thought I would use this eyeshadow palette. This is Allure 3 by Juvia's Place. This is one of my favorite color stories. And this was uh, a palette in my spring palette wardrobe selection. That video is already out on my channel if you missed it. I love this palette so much and I'm very excited to do a look with it today. So I'm gonna actually use the entire palette and I'm gonna show you how to use all the shades together. I'm gonna start with the Refer 15 brush. This is one of my favorite blending brushes. It's a little bit denser. Actually, Refer is having their spring sale. I don't know if it's still gonna be going on when this video is out, but this is one of my favorite brushes. I'm actually thinking to repurchase maybe one or two more. Excellent, excellent brush. So I'm starting with this brighter shade. Last month, I got into something that I thought it was interesting to share with you and uh, see if you guys had that experience yourself. So I got myself in the rabbit hole of color theory. There are a lot of videos here on YouTube. There's a lot of different content, a lot of different videos just from explaining to you what the color theory is and just doing like this whole entire like personal experience when a personal stylist just trying to figure out what your colors are. One-on-one -on -one, uh, session, like step-by-step step, picking all these colors is just very, very, very interesting. If you've never tried it, I highly recommend you get into this and I promise you that you're gonna get into a rabbit hole just like I did. I was not completely unfamiliar with the concept. I knew what it was, but I never really got so in depth of it and seeing how it's done on one-to-one -one, like personal basis. I mean, I play with makeup here on my channel, right? And uh, of course I understand the concept of like cool tones, warm tones, how colors go together and things like this. But this is kind of like taking it to completely another level. So you can get, of course, like a one-to-one -on -one personalized service to you and through like a YouTube channel, people that have like fashion accounts. However, if you wanna get to play with colors, there is a really cool app that's called Dressica with a K and you can take a picture of your like bare face or not bare face, whatever you want. And it's gonna give you like all these colors to play with. You can play with uh, makeup colors, you can play with clothes colors, hair color, whatever. So for the longest time, I was a big time neutrals lover and I still am. I love my neutral shades. However, I also started getting into colorful makeup, uh, like for example, the one I'm doing today. And I've been experimenting with a lot of color. Whenever I'm doing this makeup, I'm definitely gonna be doing like a lot of like back and forth blending, making sure we have like a really nice soft transitions because I'm heading towards halo eye. For the longest time, I really thought that, okay, these colors don't look good on me, like greens don't look good on me. And then you realize that there are also different undertones for every single color, like the main color, there's also different undertones and there's also different intensities. So this is basically what it explains to you, depending on your undertone of your skin, that you could be either winter, you can be summer, you can be spring or fall. And then it picks the right 
bright intensity and undertone of color. So you can technically wear any color you want, but just pick that right undertone and intensity for your skin type. I'm gonna go into this shade right here. I'm gonna use a Refer 14 to it's like beautiful small blending brush. So I really found that very, very interesting. I'm also gonna use this brush. This is um, Singe Beauty E04. I love this brush so much. So have you guys ever done color theory, like one-on-one -on -one personalized experience, or maybe you are trained in that maybe you do this for others uh, let me know in the comments below uh, maybe you know other sources that are better you share it in the comments below because i would like to even learn more about it so in the past few years i really have been into listening to podcasts and listening to audiobooks of all sorts of and kinds like fiction non-fiction i'm using cinch e05 brush for this next step so i'm kind of going into this shade back like into the bright shade i really have been loving it because it fits into my lifestyle really really well like whenever i go uh, for a walk with my dogs for like 45 minutes walk an hour walk i would just pop my AirPods in and listen to whatever I was listening to or whenever I would do chores in the house. And that's why I really got into a listening podcast because I thought it would just be a little bit more mindful of a usage of my time. I generally like housework, but just knowing that you can also do like two things at the same time, it's pretty amazing. And your chore time kind of seems like passing so much faster when you actually listen to something that's interesting. So I'm gonna leave it at that for now and I'm gonna go into this row. So I'm gonna start with this shade. This is a crease brush from Ariel Techniques. I really love this for my lower lash line. So that was working really well for me, like all this audio listening, and I still enjoy it. And all of a sudden, last month, I had this urge. I don't even have a better word to describe it. It was just this sudden urge that I needed to have a hard copy book in my hand. So I actually ended up going to the library and opening a library card. And you guys, I am like the happiest little elephant right now. Now that I built this up, I'm going into this shade right here and picking it up on a very small smudging brush. So now I'm officially a holder of a library card again and I'm very, very happy about it. So in the past month, I've read four books, I think. I am a considerably slow reader. Um, I am definitely not the fastest at all, by all means. But I think uh, for a start, like four books is good for me. So if I read like a book a week, that's like a good thing for me. And of course, meantime, I'm still reading like the reading the audiobooks. So I'll probably do like about three audiobooks a week, but then I would do um, like four, if I can read four books a month, like actual books, then it's a good stat for me. Now I'm going to my favorite shade right here. What do you guys think of a library card? Like, do you have a library card? When was the last time you had a library card? Because the last time I went to the library, it was, um, so I can't even remember the last time I was in um, a library, but I think it was sometime in college, maybe even in high school, because I don't think we really went to um, library when I was in college so much. So I'm gonna pick it up on a flat brush, uh, this blue shade, but I'm gonna spray it first and then I'm gonna definitely use my finger for it. The last time I went to the library was definitely sometime when I was like in high school. Back then it just seemed boring and you had to be quiet. I mean, not everybody had cell phone back then. So like the sign turn off your cell phone did not even exist back then. Nobody really wanted to go to library, but you had to because you had no other choice. So that was kind of like a feeling last time I remember, like I haven't been to the library in like 20 freaking years. So the feeling this time was like, completely different because as an adult you actually start appreciating the quietness the privacy and the books themselves like you have a different appreciation for literature generally it was just like such a mixed match of like how you felt about something when you were a kid versus literally the same thing but when you're an adult and it's such a vast different of perception of the same thing. In my monthly favorites video, I shared with you my books that I'm reading right now. So I think kind of like the base for my look is done. Once I do this, I am might just tweak a little bit, like make it a little bit bigger or just add a little bit of color. Let me finish this eye behind the camera and uh, I'm gonna come back to finish the rest of the face. Guys, I finished the eye makeup look behind the camera, pop some lashes and I also put in this duo from Colourpop Pencil in a shade BFF. Look how tiny this little thing is. I'll probably I need to repurchase it very soon. It's like such a spot on beautiful and neutral with this slight like rosy undertone. I think it just goes with this look really well. And then the Rare Beauty 
tinted lip oils in the shade Happy. So it does have this beautiful pink shade. So I wanted to do my blush and highlighter and answer some of your questions. So first question is from Tiani. I hope I pronounced uh, the name correctly. So her question is, what nationality are you? I love your accent. So I had to ask. Uh, thank you so much. You probably already learned it from the beginning of the video. I am Russian. I've been living in America for 18 years and uh, my accent still is with me. Then there's a question from Natalia F. I said, hi Eve, what's your favorite primer or foundation for combo oily skin? This is a good question, but I am not sure if I'm going to be able to answer it in like one sentence because I definitely have few. So I'm also using the cookie highlighter for my inner corner. I just, I need a little bit of sparkle here. I'm also gonna use this blush from ColourPop. It's called Round the World. I love this. And then I'm using a ink gold blush number 22. This is a new launch from Ulta Beauty. I love this so much. My preferences for primer shift sometimes and depending on the season, depending on the weather, depending on what's going on outside or even if I'm going outside at all. So generally I do have more visible pores on my T-zone uh, which is common for combo oily skins. So I like my primers to be pore smoothing and also control my oils. So I do have a few primers like that that do both jobs, right? Like smoothing my pores and also controlling my oils. One of the primers I actually have in my shop, my stash, which I didn't end up using it today in my video, but this is by Smashbox, it's oil and shine control primer. There's one trick with this type of primer. Once you apply it, you need to let it sit just for a little bit, maybe like a minute or so. Otherwise, it may start peeling under your complexion. Another one that's very similar to this one is just very long wearing primer also that I feel like makes my complexion looking really nice is the Urban Decay All Nighter one. I actually used it in one of my previous videos. Then I have the Benefit Pore Fashional Primer. This is a really nice smoothing primer, but it doesn't control your oils. The ones that kind of do both both and the ones that also are not talked about enough is these two. This is my mattifying face primer from Ulta Beauty and then mattifying primer from Revolution Beauty or Makeup Revolution. Why I call it Revolution Beauty? Those are really good with uh, smoothing your pores and also controlling your oils. And as far as foundation, I actually have a lot of different favorites, foundations that work with my complexion. I have some of the matte formulas that I like. I love some of the glowy foundations. It's a little bit broader question when it comes to foundations, because it depends how you prep your skin and how you finish it off. So when it comes to oily complexions, it definitely matters how you prep your skin with the skincare, how you prime your skin, then you put your foundation of your choice, and then how you finish it off. Depending on all those formulas that you're using, there might be variables. So if you're using a glowy formula foundation that might work with you. For example, I have this amazing foundation here. This is a new from Revlon, a luminance foundation. This works great for me. This works, this foundation is just such a beautiful formula and it works wonderfully for my combo oily skin but I need to make sure that I use something that is a little bit more mattifying as a primer. And then of course I need to set it with a powder and then it lasts. And there is a chance I also need to retouch it throughout the day on maybe like three, four hour uh, time frame. So that's very common for me. These two foundations that I have here, this is a Lancome Tinted Doll and then the Bear With Me Blur from NYX. Also I have this CoverGirl Outlast with the red cap. This is a very long wearing foundation. These two foundations, of course, are different from each other. However, they do have a mattifying effect to them. So you don't necessarily need to set them with powder because they are self-setting and they are mattifying formulas. So you don't wanna end up with being like a dry complexion. However, you might wanna use a primer that is a little bit maybe smoothing and not as dehydrating on your skin. So for my oily skin, I like to use primers uh, foundations and setting something, right? Like either it's a powder or a setting spray, usually it's a powder in a lot of cases. So depending on which foundation I like to use that day, I need to, or how my skin is acting that day, or what I'm gonna be doing that day. If I'm gonna be outdoors the entire time, maybe I'll go with this foundation, which I know is gonna be a little bit more mattifying and a little bit long lasting. So if I know I'm gonna be outside the entire day where it's hot and humid, I'm probably gonna go full nine yards, you know, with mattifying primer and mattifying foundation, and maybe I'm gonna have a powder, maybe I will set it with a setting spray, but then I'm also gonna have 
a powder with me. It just really varies. I have a lot of products that, that work for me, both mattifying and glowy products as far as the complexion goes, but it just depends of what you want to use. It comes down to being a formula that depending on which complexion product you use and maybe like other variables like either you're going to be outdoors or indoors, like maybe you're doing some activity, then you would need to adjust your primers and the way you set your complexion. So I hope you get it just here and my answer is helpful and makes sense. Okay that. guys, this is a finished look. I am actually not even gonna take a break, go and finish my hair and then come off here on camera all glammed up with my hair done to finish uh, on the outro, but this is just how it's gonna end. I, I hope you enjoyed this super casual video with me today. I am gonna be wearing this makeup look for the entire day, even though I'm not going anywhere. I'm just gonna be packing and cleaning the house the entire day. But this palette, you guys, is just such a beautiful color store for me. It's like one of my favorite palettes, literally in my entire collection, such a beautiful, unique color story. So today I actually did not use any sticky base for this blue shade, but it's definitely recommended because I do have some fallout underneath my eyes, but like I said, I'm not going anywhere, so I'm just gonna roll with it. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, hanging out with me today. If you have any questions about anything, comments, leave them in the comment section underneath this video. I would be more than happy to chat with you there and answer your questions. And if you have any other questions for the following, sit down to chat, get ready with me video using Shop My Stash items. Just also leave them in the comments below. I will keep them for my next video. So thanks so much for watching and hanging out with me today. And and uh, if you enjoyed this video, give this a big thumb up. And if you're not yet a subscriber, I invite you to do so before you leave. Thanks so much for watching again, and I will see you in my next videos. Bye.